What is up everyone? Thank you for joining me for another build. In this video, I'll be turning the 1144 real grade Epion from the series Mobile Suit Gundam Wing into the Unicorn Banshee from Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. So let's go see the kit and how I did it. This latest real grade from Bandai has a total of 12 runners inside the box. A good amount. The advanced MS joint of this kit, which is a signature of the line, is the pre-molded heat rod. I removed the parts from runners with the two-cut method. First cut with a regular nipper about half a centimeter away from the part. and the second cut with a single blade nipper closer to the part. For knobs that will be visible once assembled, I will file them down with increasing grids of sanding sticks. Knobs that won't be visible once assembled, I will leave them as they are. To remove knobs, I start sanding them down with a 600 grit sanding stick to remove much of the knob, and then move to 800 grit then 1000 grit sanding stick to smoothen it all out. Snapping together this kit is an enjoyable experience because of the amazing engineering band that has put into this kit to realize the articulation of the mobile suit. But there are a couple of small parts that I imagine would pose a problem for those with larger hands or those with less finger dexterity. But hopefully that doesn't deter anyone from experiencing this gorgeous kit. So the main idea for this build concept was what if the second mobile suit with a zero system was the second unicorn unit with the NTD mode which stands for new type destroyer. But not only that, an upgraded banshee with wings and a tail. Unicorn and phoenix are not the only ones that can have a tail. I know they're not technically tails but moving on. To realize this idea and taking into consideration the time I had to accomplish this, there were 5 main modifications I needed to do. Seal the chest sensor, add more horns to the V-fin, imitate the banshee collar with those triangles, the visible psycho frame, and the tail. The chest sensor recess. I will be sealing this up with some epoxy putty from this bay. Pinch off an equal amount and mix the two until you get an even color of putty. You can start using it for your intended purpose. Remove some excess and let it cure for 6 hours. After curing, it's ready to be sanded down to the desired finish. I'm adding more horns to the V-fin by cutting small pieces of plat plate, temporarily gluing them together for symmetry, then cutting them to shape using the chopper. The Banshee has a total of 9 horns on its V-fin including the middle one but I ended up with just 7 because of the limited space. I sanded the edges to make them smooth and also the front and back, especially the back where I glued them together. I attached the additional horns to the V-fin with some plastic cement. For the collar, I start by tracing out the shape of the front end with a piece of masking tape. I then attach the tape to a larger piece of claw plate and then draw the triangles. I trim close to the line and carefully cut out the shape of the triangles with my hobby knife. I proceed to attach it to the collar with some Tamiya cement. After letting it cure, I sand down the excess on the sides until it's flush. Once painted, it will imitate the banshee color well enough. For the psycho frame, it's just gonna be straightforward scribing on the armor pieces to imitate the look. I would have preferred to give it more depth with some plot plates but was limited in time for this build, so this will have to do. Of the small modifications I did, this was the most time consuming but will tie everything together to keep the destroy mode banshee look that I am aiming for. I only used my 0.5 scriber for all the lines. Light passes at first, then moderate pressure passes. Mm -hmm. 
Again, sanding after scrubbing to clean it all up. The heat rod I will attach to this bomb by drilling a hole large enough to insert the peg of the heat rod. First, I drill a hole with my largest bit, which is not large enough for the peg. To widen it, I use a display grinding head close to the size of the peg. Here is all the paints I used for this kit, but the prism blue black from Gaia is the star. I started by spraying Nazca Mecha Surf Super Heavy on most of the inner frame. It has a nice dark grey tone that you can also use it as your base color which I did for this frame. It saves time and prevents too much layering of paint which can make joints tighter. Some parts of the elbow joint I sprayed with Mecha Surf Light to give it a subtle variation. The armor pieces were primed with Mr. Primer Surfacer which I like for its durable addition to plastic. A few armor pieces, as well as large parts of the wings, I painted with AOK Diamond Blue 01. It's a bit lighter than the main color I will be using, more blue than black, and gives a very subtle two-tone to the color scheme. For these parts of the wings, I decided to paint first the base color before painting in the psycho frame. Cut out a large piece of masking tape big enough to cover the psycho frame portion. After laying it on the part, I traced the outline of the psycho frame with a sharpened stick before cutting with my hobby knife. The portion of the tape that I cut out, I saved for masking later. I sprayed EX Silver on the wing pieces after masking. For the rest of the armor pieces and parts of the frame that will simulate the psycho frame, I painted them first with gloss black before laying down EX Silver on top. I then went over the silver with three layers of clear orange paint. Top coated all the psycho frame with clear gloss, allowed them to dry, then masked them. The main color I decided to use is Gaia's Prism Blue Black. It's truly an amazing paint that gives a deep dark blue color when applied, and even better after you put on a flat coat on it, which you'll see later. Gold parts are painted with a mix of clear yellow, clear red, and clear brown in a ratio of 5 is to 1 is to 1 over EX Silver. The boosters I painted chrome by using Super Thin Down Mr. Color Super Chrome Silver 2 sprayed thinly with low PSI. I used a mix of decals for the RG, Epion, and RG Banshee. I was only able to get hollow decals for both which I never used before. I was hesitant on how it would look with a semi-gloss finish because it, that's what I was going for, but it turned out okay as you will see in the end. The silvery decals give a nice contrast to this dark mobile suit. I didn't use everything, but I did try to use the distinguishing ones like the Epion and Banshee logos as well as the Anaheim Electronics and GR decals. And the final top coat of semi-gloss to seal everything. You can see that the prism blue black looks more blue as more light hits it and more black in other angles, which I thought was perfect for this mobile suit.
unmasking reveals the steel glossy psycho frame sections which is a good contrast to the dark semi-gloss color of the build. We're almost at the end now with the final assembly. As a late decision in the build, I will drill into the completely unpainted ball joint of the neck for the wire of an LED to pass through. I drilled a hole on the part of the socket for the ball joint that holds the chin so that the LED can rest on top of the ball joint and light can pass through to the eyes. I apologize I don't have footage for the socket modification. I will drill vertically from the top of the neck, not completely through, then perpendicularly near the bottom. Since the bottom is a C-clip for neck articulation, I decided to have the wires pass through a little bit higher at the back of the neck. Once the wire reached the intersection of the two holes, I pushed it out the back with a drill bit. The wire will go out the back above the waist and below the backpack. And that is it. If you continued watching until now, thank you. I appreciate your time and hope you found this build video useful if anything. Leave a comment below if you have questions. And if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, thank you and I'll catch you all in the next build.